welcome to the MBS show, episode number 111, or 111. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James Cork. Hello, Norman. Hi, everybody. How are you doing, man? I am tired. And if this comes out a bit late, I'm sorry, because the past few days I was at a convention taking photos and my body is still aching. <laughs> <laughs> Excuses. Oh, God. Okay, um, besides the whole my body is aching thing, I was in a room with a lot of beautiful cosplayers and they look nice. But, oh God, it's like I notice them and they never notice me. So it's like, oh, I'm so sad. Hey, don't worry, they will notice you when you are late on your on your uh, deadlines. And, oh my God, Norman, what is the, where are the pictures? Give us the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I will, I will. <laughs> oh, boys. I do not want that to happen. Oh, God, my body's aching already. But, James, how about you? Uh, well, uh, you know what? For much as I like to mess with you, I cannot say I'm not on a different situation because I'm pretty much the same. Uh, plus the back things that I have to draw, the, you know, my mm -hmm. Let's Get James Cork to Back project. I got that one completely funded, but now that means I have to draw a bunch of pictures. Mm -hmm. I had to take extra commission work because the bills in my country are super expensive. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that, oh my God, my country is more expensive than yours. No, I mean, literally, we have like one of the highest uh, <laughs> rates of unemployment. Mm -hmm. And the biggest difference between what people are paid and what people have to pay for, uh, for like the basic services like water, electricity, all that. So, yeah, you know, it kind of sucks. When I have to convert the money from US dollars to euros, I lose a lot of money. So, over pressure, I took a lot of work and I don't know where to start now. <laughs> I'm actually reworking my commission list at this state in order to uh, uh, to organize myself better. Mm. But yeah, I, I, but aside from that, I cannot complain. I'm okay. I'm, okay. I'm getting out of a cold. I, you may notice it in my, in my voice. I'm getting out of the allergies, and it's so weird. I still feel like my entire head is caught in this aquarium. It's like having my head in a fishbowl. It's horrible. I, I, I guess I, I think I know what you mean, because it's that ringing sound where you talk is like in an echo. Yes. Mm. Ugh. I wish you well. I wish you well. I hope you get better. And, you know, uh, I, I wish I can help with the commissions of this, but they don't want my art. <laughs> they want your art. <laughs> I will get your art. Don't worry. Everybody will get art. And everybody gets art. Like, you know, that, oh, that gif <laughs> of Oprah Winfrey going, oh, yeah. Please, please, please. Well, in my case, is art, art, art. <laughs> uh, God, my... My humor sucks today. I need to think better jokes, or else the show, or else the show is going to be a disaster. Oh, we've we've been in worst cases, James. We've been in worst cases. This is not yeah, one yeah. of them. This is not one of them. I hope. <laughs> uh, but anywho, let, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, today we're kind of doing a quick one because convention and life are in the way, and you know a lot of people went to Babs. So yay. Nothing much to report, so... We don't, we don't have a show, or we don't have a guest, either. Yeah, kind of. Well, we, we could force one on, but I, I don't know if he's ready to be forced on a show or not. But anywho, um, let, let's properly move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. In today's news time, Buck announced Acoustic Brony and his rock band. It seems that every week we're announcing something new from Buck, and this week is no different. This week, Buck announced that the popular Brony musician duo, Ed and Jimmy of Acoustic Brony, will be returning to perform once again at the Summer Sun celebration. Links can be found in the show notes. So, James, you hyped for this? Uh, well, you know what? To be honest with you, I am not a big music guy. Ah. Uh, like, I know Living Tombstone. I know that he is probably one of the best guys in the entire community because he is light-hearted, funny, he is entertaining, but I'm not a big follower of his music. I'm more a follower of his his personality and how he is. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I guess this is going to be cool. For those of, those of you who do like uh, uh, pony music, I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy it. Well, James, since we're going to Buck and we got tickets for the Summer Sun celebration, why not, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> I do have tickets for the Summer Sun celebration. That is true. It's included in my uh, in my Celestia ticket the same way with yours. Mm. So am I going to bounce? Yes. Am I going to uh, am I going to like uh, be so hyped into it that I'm just going to collapse of <laughs> hype? I don't think so. <laughs> well. Um, in a big crowd full of music lovers, there's a high chance you might because of the hypeness. It's infectious. <laughs> yeah, but anywho, um, I too am a moderate brony music fan. I, I do like the music, but I kind of like everything really. So, you know, I'm just going to go there and have fun because, yay, fun. Anywho, let's move on to the next news. And in the next news, different version of Luna Blindback found on Taobao. If you have seen the Luna Blindback in Wave 5, you can clearly tell that it's a recolor of the Celestia Blindback. The good folks at MLP Merch Block have found a different version of the Luna Blindback on Taobao. Unfortunately, instead of a Celestia recolor, she is a Cadence recolor. Things can be found in the show notes. Yeah. I thought this was a different version of the Luna, like a more personal um, mold. But no, it, it's a Cadence recolor. So yeah. May I say that we have been on this? We have been with this TV show for almost four years, mm. and still they haven't moved on from the uh, season one Princess Luna color scheme. Oh, huh. Like you know that super uh, uh, pale. Uh, purple and the uh, somewhat very pale bluish hair, no no dark coat, no dark hair, and mm. it's it, I am like yeah that's fine that's okay that's cute but it's not badass mm-hmm. like one of the one of the things that that uh, makes Luna so distinguishable from all the other princesses is that she looks absolutely and completely badass with that that dark color scheme. That has been preserved in the comic books. That still goes on on the on the TV show, uh, and still they keep on going with this color scheme. That it's 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 annoying. No, it, no, it's not. No, I'm not. I'm not annoyed. I'm not particularly at it. But it's more like, guys. Come on, we could use like a darker color blind back, right? And you, you know, I, I'm telling you right now. Mm-hmm. They are going to do that color scheme when they release a transparent version of uh, the Luna Blind Bag. Oh, true. Or a yes. custom mold, you know, like one of those um, Octavia or even uh, Photo Finish kind of deal. If they sell, uh, if they sell a Luna Blind Bag in uh, that way, mm. that will be uh, that will be actually rather cool because that's how they sold. Like, like you said, they sold those. They sold Derpy. They sold their Indu. They are selling the. Uh, Rainbow Fight Main Six, they sold Steven Magnet, the mm-hmm. new version of Fluttershy. So, yeah, that would be cool, actually, if they do it like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm willing to buy it. But right now, they don't have it. So right now, let me see. I need to catch up on getting the Derpy one, and I need to catch up on getting the Daring Do one. So there's a lot I need to catch up on. Oh, my money. <laughs> Let's move on before I cry and go bankrupt without more money buying blind bags. <laughs> and you know, I have a perfect such way because we move from uh, uh, Pony Blind Bags to Ashens reviewing MLP Blind Bags. Oh, really now, now? For those of you who don't know, Ashens, spelled A S H E N S, is a YouTuber, a British, super British YouTuber, mm-hmm. who is well known for reviewing bootleg products. Uh, uh, new generation technology like uh, 3DSs, uh, PSPs, PS Betas, whatever, and blind back toys from many properties, from Lord of the Rings to Scooby Doo to all the other stuff. And recently, he has reviewed MLP blind bags and uh, an Equestria Girls doll, the, the Toilet Sparkle Equestria Girls doll. And you know what? I think I should talk about that. Until there, uh, to, t- till there, and just let you guys watch the video. Oh god! Because it, it it is priceless. Um, if you don't know the gist, whenever he finds a bad blind bag that he doesn't like, he takes a torch and sets it on fire. Oh my! <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, no, th- that didn't happen this time. It went beyond that because he took the blind bags, gave them to a friend of his, Mm -hmm. and this friend of his, 
He does two things. One, he's not very keen on My Little Pony or the Bronies, for that fact. Mm -hmm. And he's an expert in chemical fire. (laughs) Okay. So you can expect him to destroy the pony toys in really creative ways. And let me tell you, some of these deserve to be torched. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, because, because, you know what, one thing that I will agree with him and that he does bring up, and it's absolutely true, the color on the blind bags is absolutely terrible. Mm-hmm. Like, the, 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 the colors that these blind bags have, right, straight from the bag, they are, they're really bad. I mean, the mold is fine. And then you can take your paints and do it yourself. But if you take it just from the from the bag itself, the color is terrible. It is really bad. Mm, true, true. In every in every case. Mm, true, true. But the thing is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he reviewed uh, Wave Five. Wave Five? No, no. Um, wave well, he six reviewed or seven. several. Well, he reviewed several. He reviewed the ones that are transparent. He reviewed one that is that is sparkly. He, and uh, he reviewed uh, uh, an assembly, uh, one that is like a, one of those uh, Kinder Egg toys Ooh. that you have to assemble, put together, of Fluttershy. And to be honest with you, the Fluttershy one looked horrible. Oh, God. <laughs> like, it, 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 it looked like she had her eyes on her forehead, not on her eye sockets. It's oh, bad. The thing is, I'm subscribed to Ashen, and I've seen some of his video, and he can be funny. Uh, I tapped out when I saw him reviewing the Pony Blind Bag, because it's kind of personal for me. <laughs> but yeah, good to... Wow, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Chemical Fire, you say? <laughs> no, go check it out. It's definitely worth it. Especially what happens with the Equestria Girls doll. <laughs> oh, God. You know what? I think that should be a PSA for parents. Do not put this near a, a, a fire source because then it will burst into flames. That thing is the most combustible thing I have seen in my life. Hmm. It's like it, it, he didn't even have to try. It caught fire almost immediately. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, um, if you like pyrotechnics, I, I guess it's worth a watch. So, moving on to other swags, another exclusive My Little Pony comic cover featuring Starscream. Last year, there was a convention edition variant for the Pinkie Pie Micro featuring Optimus Prime. It seems that this year is no different too. This year's convention edition variant is for the My Little Pony comic issue number 19, exclusive from Plastic Empire. The character that will be featured on the front page will be Rainbow Dash and Starscream. Not much is known about this variant besides what was stated. Links can be found in the show notes. So, yeah, another Pony Transformers crossover. That's cool. You know what? It's kind of funny. I don't know how many people will remember this because this happened in the first half of 2011. Uh, Season 1 was still going on full swing. Just think about that. And there was this internet show hosted by ScrewAttack.com called Death Battle. Oh, yeah. That pairs up uh, 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 pop culture and uh, fictional characters from either video games, TV shows, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they put them together one one against the other in a battle to death to figure out which one is going to win. And they are like, they are kind of like the ultimate warrior of... (laughs) Video of games. nerds, of <laughs> nerds, video games, TV shows, and whatever. And one of the pairs that they had was Starscream versus Rainbow Dash. Oh, yeah. And this one was like three years ago. I'm going to spoil the hell out of you, but there is no surprise. Rainbow Dash kicked the ever-loving... That's not a word! ...out of Starscream. <laughs> then again, it's Starscream. You don't need to... You don't need to fight very hard in order to defeat him. He's the bitch <laughs> of the trans- of the of the Decepticons, <laughs> and it's it, it's rather cool. Especially when uh, afterwards they went to a Transformers convention mm-hmm. and they asked, they they said, "Okay, Rainbow Dash from My Little Pony versus Starscream. <laughs> Who do you think is going to win?" And everyone said Rainbow Dash. <laughs> no, not everyone, James. Not everyone, James. Most of the guys said yes, but the girls said no. <laughs> 
No, that, no, there was a girl who said, you know what? It is true because Rainbow Dash is very, uh, very small. Uh, she can move faster than Starscream and Starscream has a, the, the, the aim of a stormtrooper from Star Wars. <laughs> he, he's terrible. And I love one of the guys' comments. One of the guys goes, you know what? Starscream will figure out a way to fail even against a little <laughs> pony. So I think the pony will win. And, the, and to have now, uh, this convention, uh, p- exclusive variant with Rainbow Dash and Starscream. That's really cool. And also, they look like they kind of like reconcile because Starscream <laughs> is fairly happy and so does Rainbow Dash. <laughs> you know, uh, in my mind, it's like, oh, my little pony, I will get you for what happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But that's cool, that's cool. Like, <laughs> I got no idea if this artist knew about that. And he just did it for uh, Easter egg of the internet, but that very well, is cool. That is very is cool. You know how you know how the My Little Pony comics are in that they have a bad load of uh, references to everything, and I mean everything. The Celestia and Spike Friends Forever pon- uh, Pony comic. Mm-hmm. It starts with Prince Silver Saddle from Appaloosa showing up to discuss business w- business with Princess Celestia. Mm-hmm. If you remember. Prince Silver Saddle was a, a pony OC that was featured on the TV show Hot in Cleveland. And that was supposed to be a reference to the Bronies and My Little Pony. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, uh, and that one, by the way, that one was a year ago. That was uh, at the beginning of 2013. So it, it, the, the comics will reference pretty much everything. And oh. it's funny because it... It goes into older media. Do mm. you remember how Marvel had like a couple of covers where Deadpool was surrounded by little ponies and oh, then yeah. Spider-Man, Spider-Man was in bed surrounded by villain versions, uh, pony versions of all the Marvel villains. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. There was a pony Kingpin, a pony, uh, Dr. Octopus. There was a pony Venom, Carnage. There was a, a pony Green Goblin. So it was it 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 does transfer to other media, but uh, I think that's because the comic world is more flexible when it comes to copyright mm. and making pop culture references than the TV world. Mm, true, true, true. Because although this true. although this week's episode might break that uh, <laughs> uh, that <laughs> yeah is. Holy cow, I cannot wait to talk about trade. Yeah, I, oh, I, I swear yeah. to God. I cannot wait to talk about that episode. That episode was great. I need oh, to watch yeah. it again. I, <laughs> I need to oh, watch Same here, man. Like, oh, God. I, 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 you, oh, mm, no, save not it, to say save anything, it. Not to say anything, but it's the kind of episode that you have to pause every 10 seconds or else you're going to miss all the things that happen in the background. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, like, if you notice on EQD, and sorry we're not putting this in the show notes, is that... Ken Levine tweeted to the bronies. So, yay! <laughs> For most of you who don't know who Ken Levine is, he's one of the guys who created Bioshock Infinite. <laughs> so, anywho, James, um, I think that's about it, right? We got no more news to talk about? Uh, to be perfectly honest, I think we completely run out of themes that are worth talking about. Okay, cool. And you know what? I kind of don't want to let the audience down by having a short show. And, you know, let's do discussions. Yeah, let's talk about stuff. Yeah. I have a couple of things that I wanted to discuss, actually. Cool. So, why don't you leave, James? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, recently, actually this weekend, we had BabsCon happening. And there were a couple of panels that revealed small nuggets of information regarding the show. Mm-hmm. So... I think we can talk about that. Uh, I think that th- th- there are a couple of like uh, juicy uh, uh, pieces of information regarding the TV show that we so love and adore and uh, go back. That's not a word. Insane about. So we can we can talk about that. Mm-hmm. So James, what have you heard? Because I have been I have not been paying to the con scene at Babs because I was dealing with my own convention troubles. Well, you know. Uh, if I were to refer to Equestria Daily's posts regarding the writer's panel and the director's panel mm-hmm. that they posted on on their website, because sadly there was very little to almost no 
coverage of the convention through live stream or recorded media up until later they show up on YouTube. And to be honest, the YouTube videos that they have been uploaded of the convention are very, very poor in quality. Mm -hmm. I guess that what, that's what happens when you don't have other people recording the conversion or covering it. But if we were to take what Equestria Daily posted, one of the things that interested me the most was that season three was 13 episodes even before they were thinking about doing Equestria Girls. Oh, really now? That the budget that went to do Equestria Girls, the, the, the movie Equestria Girls, didn't come from the budget that was to do season three. That they were planning on doing a 13 episodes season from the very beginning. And according to what Jason Thiessen said, it was a budget thing. They had decided on season three before the craze of Bronidom hit. So the ones funding the entire idea of a G4 ribbon had to be cautious. Mm, well, it does make sense if you really think about it in the terms of, okay, a complete set of a show is about 30, 65 episodes. So in season one, we got 26, season two, we got 26, and season three, we got 13. So if all that combined, it's perfect for syndication. Yeah. So you have to be careful on that. And also you have to, you have to consider that Hasbro has been really careful on how they are handling their property. Because if this was other thing, if Hasbro were not involved, the show would have been taken by Cartoon Network by now. Oh, yeah. It could have been syndicated. I think this is one of the few uh, cases. If not, actually, I'm going I'm to be bold here and say this is the only case where a TV show that started on a completely independent TV channel because the hub was funded by both Hasbro and Discovery. Mm -hmm. This is the first time that an independent TV, an independent TV channel, has kept one of the original shows that started running on it. Oh yeah. Um, not only that, if I do remember. Um, the hub was running at first. It began running with uh, My Little Pony and uh, what was they running back then? Um, if I'm not mistaken, um, Strawberry Shortcakes? Something like that? Yeah. yeah. They started with Stor Strawberry Shortcake, uh, Transformers Prime, Dan Versus, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, of course, My Little Pony Pound Puppies. Mm -hmm. And then they released my uh, uh, little sped shop, but little sped shop started at the same time as the third season of mm -hmm. MLP. Yeah, I, I do like the little sped shop. The pet shop was nice, and uh, too bad I couldn't catch Dan versus and also Transformers Prime. From what I heard, Transformers Prime Dan versus were really good shows. I will disagree heavily on the Transformers <laughs> Prime in a good TV show, but really? that's just my opinion. Anyway, James, that was me hearing things. I haven't seen it yet, so... Mm. I, watched, I watched the first three episodes. It's, it sucks. It's like <laughs> an animated version of the Michael Bay movies. Oh, God, no. Besides that, uh, there was also one question regarding how much Hasbro influences the show. Mm. And you, you know what? From what I take of this, uh, this sentence, uh, this quote coming from Jason Thiessen, he's like... Uh, the writers come up with episode ideas. Sometimes the Hasbro XX bring something up, uh, and everyone collaborates. And sometimes have, Hasbro doesn't like the direction something is going. But overall, they're very supportive, and they they do approve of things that they think they will not approve. Like sometimes they will take, uh, from what I take here, sometimes they will take an idea really far, mm -hmm. just to see if Hasbro is okay with it. <laughs> And sometimes Hasbro says no, and other times Hasbro says yes. Mm. This reminds me of one of those cases with uh, Animaniacs, yes. Because if, you, if I remember right, one of the writers, they wrote something really out there. Like, they know the FCC will stop it. So they can put this one thing that they really want. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, I, I think that's what they did. <laughs> The other one thing that I think is very funny about that is that sometimes the things that Hasbro wants to change in the show mm -hmm. is to have the ponies wearing safety gear or <laughs> objects being less sharp looking. Uh, I could understand, but I so understand. it's you know what it's very funny. It's like okay, you have to wear you have to use safety scissors, but it's okay to have Twilight to dance in a tango with Discord. That's fine. <laughs> No, no worries about that. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, but, but you, you know, James, dancing is not dangerous. 
But yeah, Caesars yeah. But have stuff. you seen people dancing the tango? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Do you want me to bring up why I what I mentioned about the tango on the episode review that we? Nah. No, no, people can go to that. <laughs> people can go to that. But honestly speaking, but honestly speaking, I, I kind of do understand the whole safety first kind of deal because sometimes people get into bad boo boo because they didn't practice proper safety etiquette. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. And you know what? The people at DHX, they made a joke about it. Remember with Apple Bloom? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> the entire episode, everything is covered in safe protection <laughs> stuff. <sighs> you know what? Like, okay, you want, you want safety? Here's safety. <laughs> well, you have to remember that Hasbro, in the end, they are a company. Oh, yeah. They want to have their money. They want to preserve their investment. And they mm-hmm. want people to keep coming at them, buying their toys. Mm-hmm. If the parents are watching the show with their kids and they're seeing these characters handling objects that are obviously dangerous because mm-hmm. they look dangerous and they look sharp, then the parents are going to be like, we don't want this show to teach these terrible things to our children, so they will not watch it and thus they will not buy those toys. Yeah, that's true. That's in, true. In, it's funny how in protecting their investment, Hasbro is collaterally uh, uh, promoting good morals and good manners. Oh, true. That's it's true, like, yeah, yeah, they're, they're doing it because, yeah, it's safe for children, but they don't want to lose that investment. So it's like every, it's, it's like everybody wins on this, on this regard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's up to the parents also to teach proper safety etiquette. And what happened to kids these days, James? Because if you think about it, we were young ones. We watched the Tom and Jerry's and we didn't go smacking people over the head with a hammer or a mallet or even a frying pan. Well, the fact that children right now are, are way more impressionable. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, but then we knew very well that these were not real people. These were not real characters. And that all that suffering, uh, that created an, a, a lot of comedy on it. So that's, that's where it comes from. In, in the words of Doug Walker himself, mm-hmm. uh, the basis of comedy is misery. You enjoy seeing these characters being miserable, and that's why... <laughs> You enjoy it because it's not you. Mm-hmm. And you enjoy it because you use it as an outlet to mm-hmm. let go your frustration and to let go your fears, your pain, and whatever it is. So you're laughing at someone being miserable, and it's okay because that someone is not a real person. Well, that that's... someone doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It's a cartoon. Mm-hmm. And, well, that's the crux of comedy because there's comedy in other people's misery. Besides, the, it also boils down to the basic cat and mouse story between uh, Tom and Jerry or, uh, hell, even with The Simpsons nowadays. <laughs> if you want to see uh, misery and suffering, you can go watch an episode of The Simpsons and you, you, you're going to see like Homer getting hurt in terrible <laughs> ways. The thing uh, is yeah. that that kind of comedy doesn't have any space in MLP. There is no point on mm-hmm. MLP to have that kind of... Uh, that kind of comedy, unless it's called for, like throwing an anvil on Twilight's head, or dropping a giant cake on Rainbow Dash. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or, 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 or making Rarity break down psychologically <laughs> and force her to become a hick. Oh, that's just psychological, man. That's just psychological. No, but that's the thing, is that there is a way of creating misery in, in, in animation, and this TV show is exploring all of them. You know, it's kind of funny. They are not going over the top with the slapstick. And yeah, they're keeping it very safe. Mm. But that's true, okay. True. Remember, target demographic. This mm. show is for five-year-old children. Mm. Well, I, I think sometimes bronies forget that fact that this show is not meant for us. This show is meant for their little siblings. So we are just here along for the ride, taking care of the kids. If this show was meant for us, they will invite Quentin Tarantino to the next episode. <laughs> I hope so, man. Like, I wish one day he would say yes. Uh, but, yeah, I, I do see what you mean. And also, I do see one here, uh, a question that someone asked. Do you see yourself as a long-term cartoon like The Simpsons? And, yeah, with every loose thread tied up, another new character appears, Twilight becoming a princess. Each season, hopefully, has a satisfying... Has a satisf- satisfi- I cannot say that. But satisfying end. Satisfying. Yeah, satisfying end with potential to explore more until the Hasbro stops throwing us money. Well, you have to remember that many TV shows have been cancelled, then brought back, then cancelled, then brought back again. Look mm. at Family Guy, for example. Oh, yeah. Family Guy got cancelled like three, uh, two or three times. 
Mm-hmm. And they kept bringing it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Futurama is another case of a oh, TV yeah. show that got cancelled and they made four, four uh, straight to DVD movies. And after that, they go, went back to a season and then they just completely ended the show. Mm-hmm. They cancelled 24, they made a direct to TV movie, then they, uh, they made season 6, they ended the series and then they're going to make another one on, that takes place in London. No TV show ends completely. Mm. Do you know anything about the 24 thing in England or London? Because is it going to be Jack Bauer again and stuff? Or is it going to be a new character just with 24? Uh, no, it's going to be Jack Bauer in London. It's, <laughs> don't, 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 don't make me talk about 24, please. I don't want to get angry. I, I do understand what you mean, James. I do understand. <sighs> so anywho, let's move on to this one. Um, what's going on with the Wilhelm scream? You don't want to call in the Kraken. You know what? I think I would have asked that question if I had been there in that panel because even I am starting to get angry at the ex- the excess of Wilhelm scream really in the know. TV sh- in this TV show. There is a Wilhelm scream in every episode now. Uh, okay. Oh, for you guys who don't know what the Wilhelm scream is, it's something like this. <coughs> yeah. So it sounded something like that, and from what they say that. It's a long-standing tradition with audio guys. They like to give everyone the chance to add funny little things. Sometimes they have to X it just because it takes away from the narrative. This part turns out into a whole bunch of fart jokes and dubstep. And okay. Yeah, but still, yeah, I mean, it's one of those uh, traditions for audio guys to do, you know, to add in Wilhelm screen once in a while, or often as they can. <laughs> I don't blame them because I, I too am an audio guy and I just did one, so yay. Uh, but still, um, over excessiveness of special effects is no much fun. And James, do you see anything that you want to talk about? Uh, to be honest with you, I think I don't have anything else to talk about. Those are basically the most interesting nuggets of information that I could take out of the out of the whole panel. That mostly because um, mostly the fact that. Uh, Season 3 wasn't cut off because of Equestria Girls. Mm. It's, it, it's just that it, it makes a lot, of, a lot of sense. When you don't know when your TV show is going to succeed or fail, you're going to buy only a, a, a certain amount of episodes. And to be honest with you, for Hasbro to buy 65 episodes of a new TV show, that's a lot. And mm. not only that, but they also bought another... 26 this season, and who knows how many for season 5. Yeah, true. I mean, if uh, here's the thing. If people are happy watching the show and the product sells, I don't see any point in stopping it. You know, if it... it here's the thing. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> That's pretty much how I'd put it, yeah. So, with that out of the way, we discuss stuff... And I, I am happy with it. I'm happy with it. Like I just said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is shoutouts. So my first shoutout goes to you, James. Thank you for being on with me at this really strange time that we're recording this. <laughs> This has been a very interesting uh, experiment because we on we are recording this super late mm-hmm. on a Monday. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to edit this, but it's a it, it's a short one. Hell, I don't think it's going to even to be even one hour long. Well, it's forty minutes on the tape, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anywho, but anywho, thank you, James. Still, um, thank you for coming on and stuff, and uh, you know, just generally being an awesome guy. Ah, no problem, man. I'm here for ya. Yay, cool. And my other shout-out goes to my people, my peeps at MECG. You guys probably won't hear this because you ain't no bronies. So, i giving you a shout-out. It was fun working with you guys. And James, what about you? Well, I want to give a shout-out to you, Norman, for keep bringing me here, uh, coping with my stupidity and general douchiness. <laughs> uh, in that... It bec- at times it becomes the James Cork show because I never shut up. I cannot understand why people want to keep me here. To, they want to keep hearing me talk. I, honestly, I am shocked. But, but that may, maybe that's because they don't have to live with me, so they don't have to endure my uh, my constant annoyance. And they can just th- there is a pause button that is very helpful. So if they just get tired of me, they can pause and skip to the next segment where I am not talking and just keep moving forward. That's funny. Well, James, I, I think people like hearing you talk because you're Spanish. 
<laughs> and Spanish is sexy. Uh, oh, God, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Uh, I will, but that means you have to talk. <laughs> Got you there. Any more shout-outs, James? No, um, and I also want to give a shout-out to the people that show up on my streams all the time. Mm-hmm. God, you know what? There's so many people that show up all the time that I cannot remember their names. We have True Game Guru, Corner. We have... Uh, Kim. Kim, Kim Kimara Kimes, of course. She's great. I want to give a shout out to Carol Neve. I want to give a shout out to Fernin. I want to mm. give a shout out to Nifol for uh, being a great mod and a great friend. Mm. Sketchy, of course. Let's not forget Sketchy. Mm-hmm. And don't forget Rain. I think Rain comes in. Ah, Rainy as well. We have to mm. forget. Uh, we can't forget Rainy. AD draws as well. God, so many and Beth. people. Beth and Holly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's not forget the, the. Let's not forget them. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people. If you want to be part of the people that comes to James' stream and be entertained by his Spanishness, huh. do come on, do come on. I'll be there in the chat chatting up with you, or sometime if James is gracious enough, he'll invite me on to the live stream chat, uh, live stream call with him. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it'll be fun, it'll be fun, and you'll get to see things behind the scenes. Ooh. <laughs> but anywho... If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshow at gmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, well, links are in the show notes. Um, you can also reach us on Twitter. SweetieBot's Twitter account is at mbsshow. She'll tweet about updates on the show and sometimes nag at James for cursing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh-huh. with me, I'm at Norman Sanzo. You can just reach me there. I post pictures about food, toys, kitty cats, and if you want to see really good cosplayers, follow me, because I've been into a cosplay convention, so yay. <laughs> James, what about you? Uh, well, you can find me on James Lower Dash Cork on Twitter. You can find my website on DeviantArt on jamescork.deviantart.com. You can check my Movie Slate blog, my Ask Pony blog on askmovieslate.tumblr.com. And if you want to find me on Facebook, well, fat chance, because I don't have Facebook because I hate that website. Boo, <laughs> done with Facebook. Uh, I ain't no commenting on that. But anywho, I need to plug one more thing. I need to plug one more thing. Um, do listen to Brony Time episode 69 because we were there and we had a lot of fun. My favorite number. <laughs> so um, if you want to hear me and James kind of try to take over the show, um, go listen to that because we talk about... Um, what did we talk about, James? I kind of forgot. <laughs> uh, we, ha- we talk about a lot of stuff, actually. Mm. You guys should check it out because not even I can remember. <laughs> All I know is I made a bad Frozen joke. <laughs> I remember you doing the bad frozen joke. Yeah, what the hell, Norman? But it was funny. <laughs> no, it was. No, it was, and it was awkward. Uh, uh, maybe that's my humor. But anywho, also please subscribe Boom. and rate us. <laughs> and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebook. <laughs> Down with Facebook. Oh, no. oh. Anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been Jim Scork. And we'll see you guys next week. Pony on. Facebook, die! <laughs> I can't believe I tried to use that. Maybe I'm too young to really understand her. Maybe I'm too old to let it go. Maybe I'm too jaded, never appreciated the little things you already know. I can see the wonder shining in your face. But it's not me anymore With a tiny glance I get a second chance And I remember what I was searching for When I look in your eyes I can see what I could be When I hear your words I hear the sound of harmony Smiles, 
Bring me back a thousand miles to a place a lifetime away. To a time when I was free to be whatever I could be, to say whatever I wanted to say. I lost it somewhere along the line, but I can't find it once more. You give me one more glance, and I get another second chance. I remember what I was searching for. When I look in your eyes, I can see what I used to be. When I For you guys who don't know what the Wilhelm scream is, it's something like this. Um, I just put my hair in the air so that I put a sound clip there. So yay! <laughs> oh, okay. You're going to edit it later. Yeah. <laughs> Anything. Uh-